In this video, you and I gonna harmonize together step by step a partimento by Fenaroli. Welcome to this new video, I'm Ricardo Samusicus Practicus and my job is to help you learning early music theory and all the things about early music. In this video I want to help you in harmonizing a bass, a partimento, especially the first partimento of the first Fenerolis partimento of book, and give you all the tricks to do a simple but correct harmonization of a partimento. If you want to support my activity, I have a Patreon where you can uh, get exclusive benefits, download all the PDFs of my video and have the access to exclusive videos like the series Improvisation Elements that is a new series reserved only for patrons where I explain you all the tricks and all the exercises to become practice at the keyboard with the harmony and improvisation. So now let's go to the keyboard and let's start with our exercise. Okay, perfect. Now we are here with uh, our partimento. So, as you can see, this is a partimento, very simple. This is, this is a very simple partimento. And uh, the first step you have to do to realize or to harmonize the partimento is asking you three questions. The first question is, which is the key of this partimento? The second question is, which is the meter of this partimento? And the third question is, which is the harmonic rhythm of this partimento? The harmonic rhythm is a, a specific rhythm of the harmony. As you can notice in every piece, there is an, um, an harmonic rhythm depending, for example, on the form of the piece. Let's do an example. A sarabanda has in, uh, in, uh, as, uh, and it's an own harmonic, harmonic rhythm that is different than the harmonic rhythm of the Almanda, for example, or, or the Giga. So, the first step is asking you these three questions. The first question was, which is the meter? The meter is, in this time, a common time. We have four CV minimas in a bar. The second question is, which is the key of this uh, partimento? The, the answer, obviously, is uh, G major, because we have one sharp, only one sharp in the key, and the piece starts and finishes with the G note. And the last question, the harmonic rhythm, we don't answer now to this question. So, because we are in G major, the, first, the second step is playing at the keyboard the rule of the octave in G major in all the three positions. I've just published a video about the rule of the octave. You can find uh, in the information uh, in the top, at, the top, at the top of this video now. And uh, it is very important. It is very important because the rule of the octave is the basic knowledge to harmonize a bass. So, uh, now, the, as the first step, as the sec second step, let's play the rule of the octave in the three positions. This is the first position. Now, in the second position, or, or with the third in the top voice, in the third position or with the fifth in the top voice. Okay, perfect. Now the third step is playing the bass alone. So let's play the bass alone as uh, we can read on the on the on the staff. Thank you. 
perfect now as you can uh, see the harmonic rhythm of this piece is the semi minima why it is the semi minima because as you can notice we have a, a, a change of the of the harmony on uh, usually each semi minimas not uh, in all, all all bars for example as you can see in the one two three four five six uh, in the sixth bar when uh, when i have two minimas in the bass in this case the harmonic rhythm is uh, different but the harmonic rhythm is the most common harmonic change in this uh, in this partiment in every piece so what do we have to do for example let's start Let's choose a starting point. So uh, I play now the bass with the left hand and I try to harmonize the bass with the right hand. Now let's try to do the first bar. What, uh, which chords, for example, can I put? No? I have G, B, C and, uh, and, uh, and D in the left hand and then another G, this part. So, 8 means the perfect chord, so 3 and uh, 5 chord. I can start in the 3rd position in this way. 6 means uh, the, th the 3 and 6 chord, so it is uh, this chord, B, D and G. I can, for example, play this harmonization. Or I can uh, I can double another note, not the bass. For example. Now let's try to to harmonize the first bar. So perfect chord, three and uh, fifth, three and five chord, three and six chord, five means three and five chord. And the sharp means uh, a normal 3-5 uh, chord. So, the first bar is very simple. the rule of the octave you can extract the first part the ascending pentachord of the rule of the octave and apply it in this piece in this in the beginning of this partimento it is a different solution but now let's play the ascending pentachord of the rule of the octave in G major <laughs> If I don't play the second note, the result is. So if at the place of the third note, no, I, I play another chord, so not only a 3-5 chord, but a 3-5-6 six chord, that is that, I can use the rule of the octave in this point. So now let's follow the what is written now. Okay, now the second bar. Let's analyze the situation. I have the, these uh, three notes. The C and the following three notes have the same harmony of the uh, first three notes. So I think that it is very simple because it is a rising up and arriving point C and the same descending and rising down. So we are arrived in this, posi in this uh, position. Let's
let's play another time uh, another time uh, slowly <laughs> In this case, the 6 with a sharp means not only the 6, but remember also the 3rd and if you want the 4th, because it is like the ascending pentacle of the rule of the octave, that is. And also in this case we have the rule of the octave. Now on the C we have we don't have any kind of number of numbers, so it means uh, a three and uh, and uh, five chord. So we can do this for example. If I want to arrive to this point uh, on the B before the C in this position, what I have to do can be an error. An error. For example, if I play that, with the right hand, the soprano and the altos, I play to parallel fifth. That that uh, are a mistake. So because this is a partimento and not an accompaniment of another instrument. I think that uh, I should uh, not play this uh, parallel fifth. It is a very, they are very bad. So um, at the place of uh, this parallel fifth, I can do some others. For example, or maybe for having a more graceful melody, I can do also that. And why I can uh, go on the E doubling the third of the chord? Because in this way, for example, I can have a more graceful descending. Descending point, I can do this is a three five chord, this is a three six chord. Be careful now, we are uh, in uh, four voices. We are we have four voices. The fact is that E goes on the G because if I do that. I do parallel octaves. So in this case, there is a unison be between the tenor and the altus. And then we go down on the on the next chord. As you can see, I play this chord that is that is the three, four, and five chord. But when the, the this chord it is not the four is not prepared for from the previous chord, I think that it is better to not play it, and using only the three and the six. So in this way. Okay, now let's play this partimento from the beginning to this point. is the arriving, arriving point of the second phrase. In this case I have another unison. We are always in four parts. So now what we have in the bass? This is the same of the previous phrase. <laughs> <laughs> 
but in D major. So now let's do what we have already, what we have just played in, in the harmonization of this passage, but in D major. So. Now let's play these two phrases uh, together. As you can see, in this point, we have a um, 5 6 chord. So we are only a 3 and 6 chord. What can we do? We can, uh, for example, uh, keep this uh, har harmony rhythm, this harmonic rhythm, by going in the second on the second part of the minima on the C sharp minima on the fifth. Obviously, because we are now in the major, the A the A is uh, with a sharp. So, now let's play all this piece from the beginning to this point. Okay, now we have a lip, an octave lip in the, in the bass. So, what can we do with the right hand? We can only change the position. So, we, have no, we are now in the fifth position. So, in the third position, that is with the fifth in the top voice, A and E. And we jump to the third position with the third C sharp in the top voice. This chord, the, sharp, the four with the sharp, is a two, uh, four and six chord that is the same chord of A major but with the seventh, that is G, at the bass. Simply this. As you can see, in the next bar we have F sharp with a sixth D and another F sharp. It means that the, the first three notes have uh, the same harmony, that is uh, in a modern, uh, in a modern uh, explanation, D major. So we, I, can, I can play the, the third when the bass go, when the bass moves on the first step. So and then the 5 6 chord. This is the 5 6 chord that uh, is before a cadence. This chord is very important because the fifth of this chord, in this case the D, must be prepared. So, let's play only the left hand. I already have the D in the tenor. So the other voices don't look at the, at the, at the tenor that stays uh, on the D for all the bar. This is the movement. The four six chord and the cadence. Now I am I arrived in this position, so I can play the bass here. It is very large, 
So let's try to arrive in another position. So let's uh, start from the octave lead. <laughs> This is the same. As you can see, on the third uh, note of the last bar of the first uh, staff, I have two Ds, two notes that are D. So the fifth of the next chord, of the following chord, can be, bo uh, can be the uh, D of the tenor or the D of, of the cantus. Doing that, I create parallel fifth. I think that uh, it is not a very, a very so bad mistake. Yes, it. I think that it is better to not do this uh, parallel fifth. But what can we do now, as? and they are as another solution this fifth are in the middle voice yes we can for example find uh, an, a renaissance trick so the d the a goes on the e and the d goes on the b in this way But I think that it is not a really <laughs> good uh, good excuse. So now what I say is play this parallel fifth, but you must uh, know that they are parallel fifth. This is a cadenza. This is a cadenza composta. As uh, if you don't know what is a cadenza composta, I've published a video about cadences in the, in the Galan style. So you can uh, find the video in the description on my channel or in the info link at the top of this video. Okay, now let's play all this part evento from the beginning to this part. Okay, nice, nice. Now let's go on. So now we have a bar with the same notes. So we have three minimas with the D. What can I do, for example, is a change of position. I have the sixth with uh, the natural C. So the C is not sharp, but natural. And then the five and six chord. And then the resolution. So let's play another time this passage. the octave in the in the third position with the fifth in the top voice notice that uh, in this place uh, Fenerolli writes only three and six so it is this chord it can be it can be without problems but if, uh, if we know the rule of the octave we can use the three five and six chord that is this passage 
passage is the rule of the octave. And now we have uh, the passage uh, that is the same of the beginning. And a cadenza doppia. About the cadenza doppia, watch my video about the cadences, the gallant cadences, because I talk also about the cadenza doppia. The cadenza doppia is with uh, this chord. Three and five. Four and six. Four and five. Three and five. And then the resolution. So let's start from the rule of the octave. In this point I can also change position because when the bass leaps on the same note by an octave down or an octave up, I can play the same chord in the right with the right hand but in a different position. Okay, and now let's play all the partimento. Very good. So, for more video about improvisation and uh, other uh, aspect of keyboard, harmony at the keyboard, I invite you to join my Patreon and with at least the Stanley Brevis membership, you can watch all the new series that I'm uh, creating only for patrons, that is Improvisation Elements. Improvisation Elements is a series where I explain, where I show you exercises, practical exercises to develop improvisation skills, your improvisation skills at the keyboard, step by step. So in the next video we will play another time this uh, patimento, but only with the two voices. So how to compose, how to improvise a melody on a single bass? See you in the next video about harmony at the keyboard. Before greetings, download the free PDF of this video. You find uh, in the description the Patreon link with the free post where you can download the PDF of the first partimento, the partimento that we have just realized at the keyboard. I hope that this video has been useful for you and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!